So the Lord said to me today, challenge everyone, including me, are you willing to go beyond? Are you willing to allow Holy Spirit to bring you into a whole other place spiritually in a different dimension, in a deeper dimension, in knowing his voice precisely? And so he says that in 1 John 3, 8, for this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. I also typed it out in the um, Passion. But the one who indulges in a sinful life of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning, the reason the Son of God was revealed was to undo and destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy and to equip us. We're at war, and we can't win the war for our personal lives, for our families, for our health, if we're not in that place of prayer. Now, Leah said it's not out of striving, but it's out of relationship with him. It's out of us knowing. Listen, she, she, she had that dream, but that girl is play, praying and decreeing the word, listening to worship day and night, has, has a you know, teaching of faith day and night. We have to nourish ourselves, and whatever works for you is how you do it. But we need to nourish ourselves and know that we serve a God who is the great I am, who's the beginning and the end, who's the alpha and the omega, who's our healer, who's our deliverer. He's our shalom. He's our righteousness. Listen, he said, he's like, listen, I'm with you. I'm on your side. I'm working with you for your breakthrough. But don't give up because there's a prevailing prayer. There's praying because there's times, you know, you get something quick. Then there's other times we are warring. We're we've been praying for land for 20 some odd years, but we learned through it. We learned our authority. In your dream, you spoke about the police. You saw the police. That's her authority was get out of here in Jesus' name. So we also have, you'll see how Holy Spirit moves in dreams. So Leah, as you know, has been battling with cancer. And the doctors have given her a death sentence, but God. So I want Leah to share now what the Lord has done for her. So, uh, you know, besides the original diagnosis of, of the cancer, um, for the past two and a half months, I've been battling extreme fatigue and exhaustion where I had no energy to even push myself up off the bed, get dressed, just eating something would exhaust me to the point where I would have to sleep all day and all night. And um, I just kept pressing into God, and it really got to the point where I couldn't even have the energy to read my Bible and pray. I was just totally depleted. And thank God for being rooted in a church where I have people that have come around side me and lifted me up when I couldn't. But um, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, I had a dream. And the second half of the dream, I'm in a room and I'm looking at these blinds and it's like the enemy is, I could see someone trying to peek in the blinds. And even the bar on top starts to turn like a little camera looking in my room. And I hit it with the pillow and I run out the room. And as I'm running out the room, it's a dark hallway. And I'm trying to run towards the end where I feel like there's going to be a security booth or people in a safe space. And when I get down to the end of the hallway, it's still dark and I'm still alone. But I feel myself in the dream turn around and yell, show yourself. And as soon as I said the word, show yourself, everything went from dark to bright light. And it was the lobby of an old church where I'd grown up in. And there was a security booth there. Now everything was bright light. And as I turned to my right, I saw a policeman. And he was apprehending this guy. I never saw his face. I only saw him from the back. And the police was holding up like this gray board or pouch and, and talking to him. And from the moment I woke up from the dream, all my strength started coming Come back. From the moment, I mean, I had tried to go to the bathroom like three hours prior and I had no energy. From the moment of the dream, that started coming back. And, you know, we're in the month of kiss love. And kiss love is about dreams and visions. And out of the nine passages in Genesis read during this time, eight of them happened during this month. But the coolest part to me is that the word dream in Hebrew is shalom whose root word actually means to be made healthy or strong. 
So this is a time to focus on the dream. Psalm 127 says, the Lord provides for those he loves even while they sleep. And Job 33, 16 says, while men slumber on their beds, he opens the ears of men and seals in their, in their instruction to turn them from death's door. And for me, you know, I had, I have no other option but to give God glory. Yeah. It wasn't the diet because I was cheating because I was so exhausted. I couldn't cook anything. It wasn't the medicine I was taking. It wasn't me earning it by pressing in and praying for enough hours. Or re The only explanation I have is to give God glory. And all those verses that I knew, like, the Lord is my strength, and in my weakness, you are made strong, Lord. Yeah. Like, all of a sudden, all those verses suddenly clicked, and it's like, Lord, I, without you and without your strength, I can't even get out of bed. I can't even pray. Like, it's literally your strength through me. So I just want to encourage you today to not only have a fresh expectation that God can meet you in your weakest, darkest moment like he did me, but that he can infuse you with strength no matter what you're going through, no matter how much you think you haven't met the mark to, to press in, if you just put your trust in him, he is willing and able to meet and heal you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know if you recall uh, the past couple of really months, they had to bring her in on a wheelchair and take her out because she couldn't walk. So we give God the glory. So again, our expectations in him not in man. I mean, you know, we're all conduits for him, but I'm telling you, he's here to heal us. And we have that right to push the enemy back, but you have to know your authority, but also have that relationship where you're hearing God's voice. It's not me just following seven steps. It's me hearing a strategy from God. That's the privilege of us going before the throne room of grace boldly, waiting on him, sitting there. We have to be quiet. We talk too much sometimes. Just be quiet and sit and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And like I always say, for those of you who don't know Popeye, but when I was a wee child, it was an old cartoon, but Popeye the sailor man would eat his spinach and, and his muscles would grow and grow and grow. But that's us spending time in the Lord and it's like we're getting that nutrients, that nourishment, and we're getting all pumped up. You can go when you're feeling all kinds of icky and weak. We all experience that. Amen. Right? We start out like, oh, Lord. You know, and that's the enemy. He wants to distract us. We're feeling like, oh, you know, we don't really want to get into it. And then you start, and you start praying. I, I, I remember thinking, I don't know how to pray. How the heck am I going to pray? Because at the time, we didn't have internet. And like, what do you have to bring an orchestra in your house? You have worship? Like, how do you do this stuff? I'm telling you, I was a little dense there. I didn't know. You know, you take things so literal, right? And um, there's a book by Dick Eastman. I've shared this before. And he said, and he broke it down into five-minute intervals, which really helped me. Five minutes of praise. And, he, and so someone spoke to me and told me about, I said, I don't know how to praise. And they said, open up to the Psalms. And, of course, I got my Amplified Bible so I can have more words. Open up to the Psalms and just, ca you know, capture some of them and sing them back to the Lord. Amen. I'm telling you, at doing that every day for five, you know, it was ten days, I went somewhere in the Lord. I don't, you know, like Paul says, I don't know if I was in heaven, not in heaven. I don't know where I was. I mean, the Spirit of the Lord took me someplace. But five minutes of intercession, five minutes of praying in the Spirit. But then it developed from there, you know. So, and the beauty of it is we have Holy Spirit that's in us. It's teaching us, right? So prayers will penetrate darkness, every demonic assignment. And you will learn how to bind the principalities and powers. You will learn how to push him back. You will learn that above all that you have the spirit of God that's in you. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Not backing down. You're not having my portion. You're not experiencing. You're not going to take my inheritance. When um, on um, Thursday, Debbie Tag came up. Debbie, are you here? Oh, we'll pray for her. But Debbie's not here. I'm not kidding. She's probably watching online. Debbie shared a testimony, and, and that particular Sunday, it was just intense to her in worship, and, you know, the Lord gave me a word for her and said, and we're going to talk about a python spirit today that hinders our prayer life. And this spirit of python, I saw a coil wrapped around her. And I said to her, 
the Lord's going to break this thing off of you. This, we're going to pray, take authority of this spirit of Python. And I said to her, and, but the Lord spoke to me and said, he's going to give you an inheritance. Well, so there was more to it. So what had happened was her boss that day was talking about um, his wife. They, they wanted to gift her a condominium. Her inheritance. She said, I have no inheritance for my son. And there were a series of other wonderful testimonies of monies that came in, but it wasn't until we broke off that spirit that a python and hinders our finances, it hinders our prayer life. And, and things turned around. She has a condominium that's hers. Her stove didn't work for 10 years. That week, her stove started working. Her son got a raise, and she got a very large gift, a bonus that following week. That was all from taking authority over this spirit, but it comes from revelation and that hearing the voice of the Lord and saying, this is what's going on here. That's for all of us. Amen. The enemy hates marriages. He hates family life. He ha everything that is, is something that God wants us to have in restoration, the enemy comes against and lies to you and says there's no hope, lies to you and say there's no way out. There's a way out, and it comes through us spending time with the Lord and getting revelation and then being with a community of people that know how to pray and plow and break, th you know, break things through.